What's up guys? Today I'm taking a quick look at the new and improved Diamondback Gaming Mouse from Razer. The original DB debuted back in 2004 and grew to be one of the most well-known gaming mice of its generation. Well, over a decade later, it's Diamondback with a re-engineered design and some new tricks up its sleeve, including Razer's full RGB chroma backlighting. Now, while I don't have extensive experience with the original, I can tell you that the revamp uses a similar ambidextrous body with forward and back buttons on either side, sports a pair of standard click buttons, and a clickable scroll wheel. Overall, the mouse sports a simple design, which stays mostly true to the original. Original. On a scale of 1 to 10, I'd give the comfort level a 6 for me personally. Being a claw grip user myself, I generally prefer my mice to have a bit more arch. I like them with them curves. And the Diamondback body is really too flat for my taste. Granted, this is a preference thing, and I think palm rest users are much more likely to enjoy the feel of this mouse than the rest of us. That being said, the small rubber side grips are tapered inwards with the rest of the body, making them difficult to actually get a hold of. Factor in the lighting strip that's replaced the rubber grip ring from the original, and you'd swear you were playing Viscera cleanup detail with an actual bar of soap. It's a pretty slow slippery mouse, again coming from a claw grip user's point of view. Fortunately, you get some top-notch switches that deliver solid feeling clicks all around with the perfect amount of actuation force. That is, when they're buttons you actually intend to click. One caveat I encountered with the ambidextrous design is that my ring finger tends to accidentally click the outer forward button when I go to use the inner forward button. This happens especially often when my hand goes berserk in a frantic firefight, which for me is really out of character in the first place. While you can disable any button in the software to prevent unwanted actions taking place, the sound and feel of these infrequent misclicks can get annoying pretty quickly. That being said, there's a satisfying click to the scroll wheel, which is lined with textured rubber and scrolls beautifully with tactile bumps for tasks like switching weapons in game. Not necessarily a con, but something to bear in mind is that the mouse veers on the lighter side with no weight tuning option, so heavy handed gamers might want to look elsewhere. As you can see, there's also no shortage of LED accents on this thing. Everything from the scroll wheel to the palm razor logo to the seamless ring that wraps around the body is independently customizable in the software, but more on that later. When it comes to precision and accuracy, Razer has this one in the diamond bag. Ho <laughs> ho! I'll get you. I'll get you eventually. The 16,000 DPI 5G laser sensor is wicked fast, precise, and tracks noticeably better than my Logitech G500. With it, you get up to 210 inches of travel per second, 50 Gs of acceleration, and a 1000 Hz polling rate via the 7 foot braided USB cable. Now, apart from getting acquainted with the hardware, this review also marks my first experience with the Razer Synapse software, which is just as much a part of this product as the mouse itself. In here, you can import, export, and create custom profiles for different button apps actions, lighting effects, and settings. Once you've created or imported a profile, you can start remapping your buttons to perform virtually any action. Macros, DPI adjustment, program launching, and profile switching, to name a few. The suite gives you full control over X and Y laser sensitivity, acceleration, and you can even enable surface calibration based on your mouse pad. There's also an entire stats area where you can track your mouse clicks and in-game actions to provide deeper insight to your clicking hotspots, moving patterns, and why you're still single. As I mentioned earlier, a prominent differentiator of the new Diamondback is the incorporation of RGB lighting, and the software does a nice job of making it easy to trick out your mouse. The LEDs themselves are bright, accurate, and incredibly rich in color, making my K70 RGB look like it stopped giving a shit. The software's chroma configurator displays a top-down diagram of your mouse where you can select which parts you wish to edit. I was pretty impressed to find that you can also isolate different sections of the surrounding LED strip and apply unique lighting effects to any region, making the possibility that much more limitless. Among your typical static effect for applying a single unchanging color, breathing mode pulses one or two colors ominously at your desired speed. Here you can choose to have the effect activated upon mouse click or set it to run indefinitely. Reactive lighting is a single color effect that only activates upon mouse clicks. Choose the color and duration of the effect and you're good to go. Spectrum cycling simply cycles through colors of the spectrum. And while it's a neat effect, the preset blocks off the speed and activation tweaking that we saw with breathing mode. By far the most customizable and wowing effect in the bunch is Wave, a lighting trick notorious for being plastered on every RGB keyboard ever. Going above and beyond your basic rainbow wave with adjustable speed and activation properties, Synapse lets you add up to seven colors, change the stop distance between them, set color width, delay between cycles, and wave direction. There's even a split feature, which I still don't know what that does. If all of these options are making your head hurt by now, just look at what the mouse is going through, enduring an endless barrage of piercing light for your optical titillation. I kind of know how he feels. 
Speaking frankly though, Synapse is a well thought out program that gets the job done and then some, but it's not without its faults. For starters, the pop-up window for button remapping can't be moved, and neither can the main window while it's open, which limits some visibility. Also in the button mapping tab, the numbers representing the forward and back buttons on the mouse diagram are in descending order from top to bottom, but ascending order in the left hand list. Call me nitpicky, but this just seems counterintuitive. My only other critique here is that the sectional grid around the mouse diagram in Chroma Configurator is rendered much too light, and I find myself having to squint when selecting individual cells. Apart from a few innocuous shortcomings, Synapse offers an overwhelming number of possibilities, particularly with LEDs, and the execution of lighting effects here are some of the best I've seen among gaming peripherals. Now be that as it may, blingy lights aren't for everyone, so the LEDs can be turned off if you prefer a stealthy diamond black. On that note, I can see you're all about to pull the curtain on me, so to sum up, I feel very strongly about the software, the accent lighting, and the awesome sensor, and I think those are all welcome additions to the Diamondback lineage that most gamers will appreciate. On the other hand, the flat and slippery body design just isn't for me, and I'd only consider recommending this mouse to pure palm rest users or for gamers who need the ambidexterity. But let me know what you guys think of the new Diamondback and how you think it stacks up to the original. 